States of America. Since this is the United case, one year ago, we said the corporations have the same rights of people to spend their money however they want on elections. With almost no restrictions. And that's the way it should be because corporations are people. Don't you see what's happening in the United States? We voted to give the corporations even more control over our elections than they already had. And we sold out the American people one more time. I'm Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and I voted against this awful idea. I'm Justice Clarence Thomas, and I'm an Oreo. I believe my colleagues just bought the best democracy money can buy. So. Once, they're, once they're into the private market, you've lost control. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. I'm your host, David Delk. Today, our guest is Jason Kafori. Jason is a organizer with the Oregon Progressive Party and a lawyer here in Portland. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great. Yeah. So we wanted to talk about drones today. Let's talk yeah. about drones. Yeah. Let's let's just start with the with the real basics. Is what what are drones? Why were they developed? Uh, drones are. Uh, they're basically robots that are fly in the sky, and uh, they started in our military, and they're what now basically does our warfare for us in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Um, they're controlled by a person on the ground. Uh, I actually have a friend who was a former pilot, couldn't get a job as a pilot, and ended up getting paid from a private contractor something like $60,000 every few months to go sit in a room and fly uh, a remote controlled plane uh, and they have the capability to be armed and to actually you know shoot and kill uh, so we have created in our society uh, a new weapon and now uh, these flying drones uh, are coming to the US and and it's really a scary thing okay all right yeah and and drones in my mind, originally were really large, right. you know, but miniaturization has happened to them. Yes, they are getting smaller and smaller. I was just reading an article. They have a new one that's the size of a bumblebee. Hmm. And uh, the really scary part about this is nobody's really blowing the whistle and asking, okay, where are we going to draw the line on what's okay and not okay? And we have defense contractors that are making these uh, drones, and some of them are large. I mean, some of them can be, you know, 20, 30 feet wide, uh, but other ones are, you know, that small. Uh -huh. And uh, they all have the capability of filming, you know, some from miles and miles and miles uh, up, and you don't even know they're there, um, all of your daily activities. Okay, and so some of them have weapons on them. Some of them are weaponized, uh, oh. correct. Um, the, you know, the scary concept sort of, uh, you know, like a futuristic movie of these things flying around uh, is, I think, in, in a scary sense, uh, not very far away uh, mm -hmm. from where we are right now. The future is now? The future is happening. Uh, yeah. And the, the FAA, uh, Federal Aviation um, Administration, recently, I think in February uh, of this year, uh, changed the rules uh, to allow a lot more uh, domestic drone um, uh, you know, businesses to start cropping up. And there was an article recently uh, about uh, the, the police forces across the country are really ecstatic to be getting drones uh, so they can do surveillance. Mm -hmm. And we already know uh, with the Portland police, they have a criminal intelligence unit. I actually learned that um, as an attorney uh, working on a case, um, they have seven staff members that are full-time uh, within the intelligence uh, division uh, mm -hmm. of the police, and they admitted to me uh, under oath in a deposition that they go undercover and do you know, surveillance of protests. Uh -huh. So knowing that that's happening, and now we have police forces that are going to have unmanned drone capabilities. Um, 
who's checking and you know wh where's the balance? Mm -hmm. You know who, who, mm -hmm. who's go who's going to draw the line on what's okay and what's not okay? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and at least nationally and actually internationally, there's this whole concern about the use of drones to kill American citizens and other people. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, so Obama, terrorists. you know, Obama, he is a constitutional lawyer. I mean, he understands that we as American citizens, you know, have the right not to get uh, blown up, whether we're in this country or, or somewhere else, uh, unless a court of law is involved. Mm -hmm. And he has authorized killing of American citizens uh, in a blatant violation of the U.S. Constitution, and there's not really a big uproar about it nationally. Yeah. You know, right, it's, right. it's sad. Um, and, you know, if, if a Republican was doing it, the Democrats would be all over them. Mm -hmm. But when they, when a Democrat does, they just kind of shrug and move on. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, there, there always does seem to be this double standard. There's if de Democrats do it, then uh, it becomes, well, it, the Democratic Party becomes silent on it. Right, absolutely. Right. And that's but why we need third parties and independent right. parties mm -hmm. out there pushing the two parties, because without that, mm -hmm. I mean, where's the Democratic Party saying, hey, wait a second, drones, let's have some, some regulations on this. Uh, I mean, the concept of your neighbor wants to spy on you, right? Mm -hmm. And this is really a, a right and a left coalition issue. I mean, the, the far right wing, you see them on the... Drudge Report and everything else, they're going bananas about all these uh, uh, drones. But imagine your neighbor deciding he wants to check out what you're doing, buying a little drone sometime here in the near future, and shooting it up into the air to, to check out what's going on in your window. I mean, it's, it's scary. It really is. And without some sort of societal analysis of this is, you know, we're not going to tolerate this, um, it's going to keep getting worse. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and you're talking about a question about whether um, the president should be able to authorize this. Right. And a question about what standards does he use right. to make the decision. Uh, there's also the question about the international law. Right. right. Absolutely. Right. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I just looked this up on Wikipedia. We have 150 military bases in 150 different countries, you know? And, and, and we are an empire, it's just a fact. And you know, now we're taking, and I think Americans are starting to wake up to the fact, we're taking what people in Pakistan and Afghanistan have known for years, that these are really scary things that can fly above you and you know, all of a sudden you're just dead uh, without any warning uh, when they, you know, from miles above can, can pinpoint and target you, all of a sudden, Without much thought, we're introducing mm -hmm. um, this technological, uh, really a nightmare uh, right. to, to our society. Uh, yeah, and there seems to be a feeling that we have this technology and no one else ever will have it. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. And, and, and what would we say if Mexico decided to shoot a bunch of drones up and check out what we're doing uh, on a military standpoint here in the U.S. at our bases. I mean, mm -hmm. what would be the public reaction to that? Mm -hmm. It would be outrage. There would be. Yes. But are you seeing the outrage out there on domestic drones? I mean, they're, they're, it, it's starting, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the Electronic uh, Frontier Foundation uh, has set up a, a website, um, and they are you know, actively uh, pushing for city councils to uh, adopt resolutions, uh, you know, banning the use of drones, and that's what we really need here uh, in Oregon and, and in Portland. Okay, all right. So let's just jump right into into that. Although we need to come back, you know, and talk a little more detail. But since you brought that up, I yeah. know you're planning on introducing or proposing a resolution to the Portland City Council. So yeah, absolutely. Um, the Oregon Progressive Party at our monthly meeting um, decided that. Uh, we wanted to make Portland uh, a leader nationally on this issue and wanted to be, uh, I think we'd, we would make ourselves the, the largest major city to ban uh, drones. And I, I ran into uh, mayoral candidate Charlie Hales. Uh, he told me he would support the idea uh, mm -hmm. to send him a proposal. Uh, I, I talked to Jefferson Smith. Uh, I think he would be interested in it as well. So uh, if we can get both mayoral candidates uh, and we can, um, you know, get three votes on the city council, we could make uh, a big, big statement uh, mm -hmm. and, and really help 
build a movement. And, and you know, Portland and Oregon has been examples for the rest of the country on a lot of issues, mm -hmm. uh, bottle bill, et cetera. So right. yeah. uh, it would be wonderful. Yeah, it, would be, it would be wonderful if Portland was an example for the nation at, on something that's kind of current as yeah, opposed to having exactly. to talk about exactly. the beach bill. 20 or years the, ago, 30 years ago, uh, what right, we did. Yes. And, and oh, exactly. Right. Yeah, uh, you can only live on that reputation for so long. Well, I guess what, what, what we had, uh, you know, death with dignity uh, mm -hmm. and uh, medical marijuana. Uh, those were both, uh, you know, pushed at oh, an okay. earlier stage mm -hmm. uh, here in Oregon. But um, yeah, this would be current, and and it's a hot topic, uh, and it it goes right at the core of do we take our civil liberties for granted? Mm -hmm. You know, wh where do we draw that line? Mm -hmm. And um, I think most most Americans at this point in time are saying drones are good because you know we can go kill them, right? And they can't come and kill us, right? And our soldiers are not, and and, and and we're not, you know. We're fighting wars with robots. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not losing U.S. lives. Mm -hmm. uh, but talk to a family from Pakistan that was you know, had their family members killed uh, by a drone. I mean, it, that's where you would see the power of it. And because we haven't had any, you know, fatalities here, they did have a drone that crashed the other day. One of the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was in a in Maryland, uh, and oh. that that led to a big spike. But you know, just think about it from this standpoint. Uh, you, have, you start having everybody with their little robot plane that can spy on others. What's that going to do to aviation, you know, for example? Um, are, are drones going to start running into planes? Mm -hmm. um, who's in control of that? Uh, you know, there's so many unanswered questions. Mm -hmm. And this industry is racing uh, to, to fill um, what is an unnecessary void. I mean, why do we need drones? I mean, I, I understand, you know, we, we were talking about this earlier, when could a drone be useful, mm -hmm. right? Missing person out in the forest. Um, I, I, I get that, you know, send out something that could be remote controlled and, and try to locate that person. That makes sense to me, you know, mm -hmm. in sort of an emergency standpoint. But why would you need them in the city of Portland? Mm -hmm. I just don't get that. Yeah, un unless unless you're doing surveillance. Uh -huh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Does the city of Portland have any drones now? Uh, I am not aware that we have any. I uh, I know that Seattle's police force uh, has uh, drones and, and a drone uh, unit. And uh, I know there was an article I read last month. The city council wasn't even aware of the fact that Seattle's police force had ordered these drones. Oh. Right. Yeah. So wow. that's scary. So I, I, I am looking forward to the conversation uh, with the mayor uh, and with the rest of the city council. Uh, we're going to uh, plan on um, pushing this starting August 22nd. Mm -hmm. uh, city council has a, a Wednesday meeting uh, at 9 a.m. And, um, you know, we're going to hold uh, a demonstration out front of City Hall on okay. August 22nd. And um, we, might, we might even have a drone there. Uh, for oh, a visual, uh, uh, visual impact. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, you, even if you can't get a drone, you can just get one of those uh, helicopters. I should. I, 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 I could fly, fly yeah. the helicopter uh -huh, right. and have it land on top of City Hall. Uh -huh, yeah. How, how would how would you like this? Right. Yeah. <laughs> or just peer in the windows. Yeah. I, 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 could, I could go around Mayor Adams' uh -huh. office right there. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So who 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 are major developers of drones? And who, who profits from the from you know from um, drones? it's. It's the aviation military industrial complex, you know, so Boeing, um, uh, McDonnell Douglas, uh, folks that um, have been doing it for the military purpose. And they're looking, as any corporation does, as at their bottom line. You know, wh where, if they think that out of the 310 million Americans, you know, half a million people might want a drone someday, uh, a million people might want a drone. I mean, that's a huge market for them. They're, there is a level of saturation that our military can use drones, right? I mean, there is some sort of a, a breaking point where we say, oh, I think we've got enough drones. Uh, but you know, seven, seven billion people in the world, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of potential markets okay. out there. Yeah, for, for, for private citizens to, private or, citizens. or for corporations to buy and, and them. And, you know, I, the public, we really need to separate it, right? I mean, what's your policy in terms of public use of drones? Um, I can imagine some emergency situations where... I, I see the use, like we talked about finding somebody. Um, but from a private standpoint, name one good reason why a private citizen should be able to have a remote-controlled spy plane. Mm -hmm. What about Second Amendment rights to carry arms? 
<laughs> just to throw yeah, yeah, something. But, but, but no, but you know what's funny? Um, I will bet the people that are that are the most scared, angry, frustrated by all this are some of the hardest core right to bear arm folks out there. Uh, just from what I'm seeing in the you know far right, um, sort of almost libertarian. Uh, side mm -hmm. of the Republican Party. Yeah, yeah, I could see libertarians being very concerned about this. Republicans themselves, not. And we've already t said that you know the Democrats don't appear to be concerned about it at all. It's not really? on the radar. You know, here, here's the thing, and this is the point of third parties to me. Um, a third party helps push an agenda item that the two parties either don't have time or interest in talking about, mm -hmm. or it's just not politically feasible to, to be out there on that issue. So that's the advantage of working with the Oregon Progressive Party. You know, we're small, but we're, we're nimble, and we can quickly maneuver on public policy stuff like this, mm -hmm. and, you know, we can inject into the debate something that the Democratic Party just wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this city resolution, do you have someone on the city council now that is willing to actually um, bring this up? Uh, for discussion? Well, or? I, I, I haven't brought it to anybody at the city council currently. I did, as I, as I mentioned, talk to both mayoral candidates about it, and I got support for the idea conceptually. So mm -hmm. I'm sure what's going to happen is we'll draft the resolution. Uh, we, uh, I already have a, a, a draft of it, and we will uh, you know, probably present it to, to everybody there. And I'm hoping that we it, it's not a big fight. I mean, it seems to me um, a, a pretty simple... You know, it's it's a place for Portland to make a stand, mm -hmm. um, and gosh, if Portland doesn't make a stand on this issue, who is around the country, right? right? Yes, right, yes. It, it kind of gets left to little Beirut, <laughs> Portland, <laughs> <laughs> Portlandia. We finally get to right. use that, right? Yeah, so. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Medea Benjamin wrote a book. Yes. Just very current, which is called... Um, Co Code Drone Pink and, and Medea Benjamin. I've actually been contacted, uh, the Progressive Party has, by Code Pink here uh -huh. locally. And oh, they, okay. they'd like to um, participate in this okay. fight, too. Okay, great. So Medea Benjamin, her book is titled um, Drone Warfare, Killing by Remote Control. And uh, Medea Benjamin is also the... Uh, also the co-founder of Global Exchange. Yes. Which is uh, a wonderful organization. organization, right, which, you know, folks out in the audience, if you don't know Global Exchange, by all means. I think it's globalexchange.org, I believe. Uh, right, yeah. Um, she focuses primarily on the international and the military uses right. of, of, uh, of drones. Um, not so much about domestic uses. So it's really important that this aspect of it yes, be brought up. Yes, so, absolutely. Right. And, um, I think everybody you know, in the back of their head, uh, it, it would be hard for me to imagine an American citizen who I approached and I said, how would you like it if your neighbor had the ability to spy on you through your window with this little bumblebee? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine many Americans would be okay with that concept. Uh, in fact, I can't think of one uh, that would be okay with it. So why is this not getting more you know, outrage amongst right. the citizenry? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I think part of it is we just need uh, more dialogues mm -hmm. uh, on the subject and and to, to really paint people the picture of this is scary folks I mean this is this is the future and uh, you know mm -hmm. Robocop and Total Recall and and, and you know all, all those type of futuristic movies we're there yeah yeah so we really can see you know at some point in in time that you know we have our robots yeah. And our drones and they, whoever they are at the time, whoever we designate as they, uh, will have theirs also. Once they're, once they're into the private market, mm. you've lost control. Mm -hmm. You really have. Mm -hmm. uh, and people that want to be, you know, doing surveillance, will be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I always I always laugh about this concept. The government, you know, is watching us in a million different places, but it actually takes people power to go listen to all of our phone calls, right? You mm -hmm. know, to, to figure out who could be a threat. Uh, and so I think we're nearing that point where, you know, s the uh, voice recognition software and, and computers are going to be able to, you know, be out there listening to us. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is just another vehicle for that, right? Yeah, oh, oh absolutely, right, yeah. So uh, 
tell us a little bit more about the Oregon Progressive Party and what does it stand for? Uh, the Oregon Progressive Party uh, was, um, it started off in 2008 as the Peace Party. Um, and we put uh, Ralph Nader uh, on, our, on our ballot line. Uh, we got the required signatures to, to make a political party. Um, after the 2008 election, we decided to uh, broaden. Uh, we are, you know, uh, uh, peace and justice uh, was, was a big, big you know, portion of the party to, to begin with, but we thought that progressive, um, you know, capturing, especially during the economic collapse, you know, post-2008, um, hit home with a larger uh, you know, array of issues that we cared about. So uh, we are um, big advocates for single-payer health care, um, uh, big advocates uh, for um, a New Deal type program uh, to get America back to work. And, uh, you know, o Obama just didn't spend enough money and didn't put enough people to work uh, mm -hmm. with his stimulus bill. And that was part of the, that's problem, part of the problem why our economy is still sagging. Uh, today. Um, we also are um, strong uh, on global warming, um, trying to fight for renewable energy sources, uh, no to, to coal, uh, nuclear power, and you know the, the, the old technologies. Um, and uh, you know we're about 2,000 members uh, statewide uh, are registered progressive and um, you know we're growing. Uh, we're a growing party. And uh, we have uh, you know, various contacts uh, around the state that are, that are activated. And uh, this year, uh, we've nominated Rocky Anderson, uh, former mayor of Salt Lake, uh, as our presidential candidate. OK. Right. Tell, tell us a little more about him. Uh, he's a wonderful guy. Uh, he came out uh, in May uh, when we made the announcement that we were going to uh, place him on our ballot. Mm -hmm. um, he is a human rights uh, attorney, uh, former mayor uh, of Salt Lake, uh, and he is hardcore uh, progressive. I mean, he and I, I, on this drone stuff and the civil liberties and uh, you know, fighting limitless wars uh, across the country, he's a hundred percent with us. Okay, great. And recently, you did. Um, um you brought to the attention of Portlanders the question about surveillance cameras in old spy, town. Cams, spy as, cams, as we as, right. as we called them. Yeah, mm -hmm. we actually got a lot of media uh, attention for that. Um, so I talked about the police having this criminal intelligence unit, right? Mm -hmm. We know they're spying on on people. They, that's just a fact. Um, we don't know the extent of it, uh, and we don't know you know how often or when or when they have undercover folks there. So what the cops wanted was to put cameras in Old Town, in a Chinatown area, and they wanted to have 24 hours, all the tapes would get erased. That was one of their you okay. know, points. Uh -huh. uh, but basically they were arming themselves to be able to try to go after you know drug deals and stuff like that if they wanted the tape. But if they abused somebody and hurt somebody, the tape would be gone. So that was one of our that, that was one of our big objections. We said, wait a second, you're creating evidence, you know, as an attorney, right? Uh -huh. You're creating evidence to help you if you want it, but then. So if it would be helpful to them, then they would. Yeah, keep then the they tape. would keep the tape, right? right. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. right. But what, what kind of a citizen that gets abused? Let's say they end up at the hospital. Who's going to know within a short time? Oh God, I was on, you know. Fourth and Davis. Therefore, there was a camera there. Therefore, uh -huh. the cop, what they did to me, could be on tape. I mean, that's. That's a lot of levels to get to in a oh. short amount of time. So, but um, I, they they did some tweaks to it. They did eventually uh, pass it. Um, but this is serious. This is public entities going on to private citizens, you know, businesses, and mm -hmm. saying we have a right to place a video camera. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're just going to take over a portion of your of, of your spot here. And it was scary. It, you know, it, it really was. Right. Um, and to, to, uh, as I recall, this was on their consent agenda. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Tell, tell and, us and, about the consent agenda. Uh, so um, sometimes when city council wants to just you know push something quickly, uh, they basically go in and uh, they have a you know a, a laundry list of items to talk about, and then they have a consent agenda, which, as I understand it, is basically everybody just says sure uh, and you know, approve, approve, approve. Uh -huh. Well, on this one, um, this was a very small item on a very long list of, uh, of agenda items and the cops were pushing for it and they were going to have a just a consent agenda 
push it through. Uh, Elena Melville uh, with the Oregon Progressive Party actually burrowed into the details of it, found out about it. We put out a press release. Uh, then the city council delayed their decision over multiple weeks. There was a lot of public input, uh, and they did pass it uh, eventually. But you know, I thought that we we took a, we did a, a good job of fighting them, and I think we made a better bill uh, when all was said and done. And you know, I'm really looking forward to pushing them on this drones issue. I I, I, I want to hear one of them defend why we need private citizens with drones in Portland. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. I'll be very curious. Or, or, or why we need police with drones. In or Portland. why we need police with drones. Yeah. And uh, I, I'd like to to say, hey, we know there's a criminal intelligence unit within the police. What are they doing? And we have this Oregon law which says you cannot be spying on a citizen here in the state unless you have you know, some sort of reasonable suspicion that they're, they're actively doing a crime. But uh -huh. just because they think a certain way or just because they have a religious belief or anything like that is totally off limits uh, for doing surveillance. So how do we know they're maintaining that? Right. Where's the yeah. watchdog? Yeah, yeah, where's the watchdog? It, it, well, we've only got two minutes, so we can't really dive into this one. There's but, a lot of issues. But, uh, yeah. yeah, there's just, yeah, as we continue talking, there's more issues. But uh, I, I, I know there have been other watchdog groups and other uh, commissions that have investigated. Um, but it seems like it doesn't matter you know, because those things happen anyway. Uh, you know, if, if you allow the technology to be there, someone is going to figure right. out how to use it and not be accountable for and, it. And that's why I am... I'm on a full public and private banning of drones. That, 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 that is the Oregon Progressive Party's position on this. And I, I, I look forward to the debate on it, you know. Right. Let, let's have them put the reasons why we need them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let's let, make them get a little bit defensive and have to, and have to show why we need them. Because uh, I've got 114 good ones on why we don't. Great, good. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much. All right, good. So we've been talking with Jason Kafori, who is a organizer with the Oregon Progressive Party. Uh, there will be a demonstration at Portland City Hall on uh, August, August 22nd, 22nd at about 8.30, uh, 8.30 in the morning, yeah. Right, uh, and then there'll be some testimony before City Council. Uh, the book I mentioned earlier, Drone Warfare, Killing by Remote Control by Medea Benjamin. Uh, Medea is a co-founder of the peace group Code Pink and the international rights organization Global Exchange. Uh, to get that book, you do need to order it online from orbooks.com. Um, never miss an episode of Populist Dialogues again. <laughs> Populist Dialogues is now on YouTube. Go to youtube.com and search for Populist Dialogues. Click on the result with the Statue of Liberty icon to view all our shows this year and to subscribe. To subscribe. The mission of the Alliance for Democracy is to end corporate domination, establish true democracy, and create a just society based on a sustainable, equitable economy. Learn more about us at thealliancefordemocracy.org or our Portland website, afd-pdx.org. Thanks to the crew today for being here. Roger Bates, Joan Horton, Dave King, Ethan Scarl, and Tom Thomas. And thanks to you, the audience, for watching. We hope we'll see you again next week. Bye.